must be greater than the absolute value of y. That's a fact. No, 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 my name is, oh, okay, you know all of this by now. This, 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 come Real numbers x, y, and z satisfy the inequality. Zero is less than x, which is less than one. Negative one is less than y, which is less than zero. And one is less than z, which is less than two. <laughs> First of all, we know that x is positive because it's greater than zero. However, x is a decimal number because it's less than one. So, that means that multiplying x by anything, so multiplying x by z, for example, will be less than z by itself. That's the thing. So, y is negative, but y is also a decimal number. So, I've already given an explanation here above. And finally, can you predict what z is? Because it's between the positive numbers, one and two. So is it positive or negative? Well, it has to be positive, since it's between one and two, which are also positive numbers. So, it's not a decimal number. So, let's get into it. Which must be positive? So, y plus x squared. Well, thing is, x could always be less than y. So, that uh, an x squared is less than x, and must be less than x. So that means that x squared could be less than y. So that would mean that this doesn't have to be positive. For example, say we have a situation like this, where y is 0 0.5 and x is 0 0.5. x squared would be 0 0.25 and y would be negative 0 0.5. So, that means you have negative 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25, which is negative 0 0.25. So that means we are out of the question here. What about y plus xz? Well, as we've stated before, x times z is less than z because x is less than one. So, that means that since z is less than xz, z is always greater than y, but z is greater than xz. So, xz does not have to be greater than y. If x is a very low value, then that means that y could be greater than xz. So, it's not necessarily greater than y. Like, for example, in the scenario that z is 1.5 and x is 0 0.5 and y is negative 0 0.5 or negative 0 0.9 let's say in this case what would happen well you would get 1.5 <coughs> times 0 0.5 would be equal to 0 0.75 and 0 0.75 and 0 0.9 negative 0.9 make negative 0.15. So, that means that this doesn't necessarily work out either. Alright, so third, y plus y squared. Now, even though y squared is positive, y squared will be less than y as y is less than negative, uh, is greater than negative 1. Or in other terms, the absolute value of y is less than 1. So, that means that y squared will always be, well, greater than y technically, but less than the absolute value of y. So, that means that if y squared is always less than the absolute value of y, this but unnecessarily is negative. So that's the complete opposite of what the question is asking for. Now, this, for the same reason, even though it's not necessarily 
negative, it still definitely can be negative. Like, for example, in a situation where you have 0 0.9, or, hmm, let me think about it, negative 0 0.5, or even negative 0 0.4. And then you have plus, y squared is 0 0.16, so you get 0.32, which leads to a non-positive outcome. So this is not necessarily negative, or positive. So what about the last one, y plus z? Well, z must be greater than the absolute value of y. That's a fact, because z is greater than one, while the absolute value of y is less than one. That means y plus z must always give you a positive number. Like for example, z has to be greater than one. So let's say we have 1.001 and y being negative 0.999 because it can't go any deeper or lower than that. That still leaves a positive number as the outcome. So, that means that E must be the answer. So that's it. This, this, this.